The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 7th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Send an email off to steve at tfn.com. Please send it off early. And in that subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger Stem, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a mixed bag out there. That mix goes like this. you got the Dow up 67, S&P up 15, NASDAQ 100, 157. Russell's down two. Semis are up 40. Trannies are up 11. I don't know if I've got an issue with the, I think i got a data feed issue on the New York Stock Exchange out there. You've got gold trading down 17 bucks, 9 tenths percent, 62 pennies for silver. That's a 2 and 7 tenths percent. Lights recruit off 242. That's testing support. That's a 3% move to the downside. Natural gas down 9 pennies right now, trading out at 317. 30 year treasury, printed out at 113 and a quarter. That's up uh, 1 point and 10 ticks out there. Lead the charge dollar wise, the upside. Data dog, 23 bucks. Adobe, 22. HubSpot, 22. To Trans Medics uh, 21 bucks, Snowflake up 17. To the downside, it's Shockwave Medical, 35 point move there. Air Products down 30. Novanta down 18. ICU Medical 17. Northan Corp down 12 bucks. That's a 62% move. Holy shnikes there. But let's go take a look at what's going on inside these markets, try to get a handle of it. For uh, that, we're going to begin by taking a look at our equity future contracts. We're going to go take a look at the daily and the weekly time frame all on one screen. The upper row is the daily. The bottom row is the weekly. If we start with the ES Mini on the daily time frame first. Each of the weekly time frames last week confirmed Gartley buy patterns, buy the D point patterns. Well, in fact, we'll, stay, we'll stick with the uh, weekly charts. Now, what the ES Mini is likely doing is targeting that oscillator and change line. Whether or not it can close above it, I don't know. But that oscillator and change line is at 40, 44.09. So you got 44.09 as one resistance point, And on the daily time frame, it's at 44.23. That's a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. That is very likely the area, the range where the ES Mini is headed to. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ forming a buy the D point pattern last week, its oscillator and change line is currently at on a weekly basis 15, 457, 458. That's likely where price is headed to. However, we see that price is trading above its TD Nike out breakdown level. That's at 15, 309. That's a very bullish move. Now, there is resistance at the top of the uh, swing point from October 12th. That resistance is 15, 468, 75. That's where price is likely headed to. If price can close above that 15, 719 on the daily time frame, becomes its next upside price target. The Dow Equity Future contract closed above two days ago. Yesterday, the TD Nike out breakdown, uh, breakdown level. So that's a very positive uh, news, piece of news. With a weekly chart, we've got a confirmed buy the D point or Gartley buy pattern and prices trade above that oscillator and change line. The Dow
Dow Equity Future contract very likely headed to 34,473. It has resistance on a daily time frame at 34,305. So if price can overcome that, and you're asking Stevie the question, where is price headed to? Pretty simple. The next resistance point, that's up at the 34,473 level. Finally, let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 is trying to form a new profile that is below price. That is a bullish signal out there. So that, that doesn't mean price can't pull back there. And, you know, it's kind of, it's weak. The Dow is weak. The, uh, the Dow is uh, the Dow. The Russell 2000 is the weakest of the uh, four that we're taking a look at. Uh, the Dow equity future contract did dip below yesterday's low, so not as strong as the ES or the NQ out here. But right now, the Russell 2000 is the weak link. The Russell 2000, uh, no more really uh, uh, for us, no need for us to discuss more. So it's really going to be all about the NQ, isn't it? I think it's really all about the NQ. Well, what do you mean by that, Stevie? Well, what I mean by that is if we really want to understand what the NQ is doing, we can't just take a look at this chart or the intraday charts right now. What we need to do is go see what's going on with the components that are underneath the covers. So let's do that. To do that, we're going to have to switch over to another set of screens out here. Give me a moment to pull it up first. This first screen that pops up that uh, the, uh, is going to show on your, in your, on your monitor is actually the second eight weightings, top weighting, top weighted, top weightings with inside the NDX 100 as of yesterday's close. But you and I, we want to take a look at the top eight. In the top eight, we start with Apple. If we take a look at Apple, nice uh, TD nine count bottom, wave number seven bottom, price yesterday closing above its TD nine count breakdown level. That's at 178.42. Price is trading, or is likely the next resistance point is a swing point that's also a TD nine count top. And that's where price is gunning for. The high of that swing point is at 56, uh, I'm sorry, 56. The high of that swing point is 189.98. There were 56 million shares traded that day. We are already, we've already done 20 million shares inside of Apple. Wow. And that's an hour and a half of trading. Price, in the case of Apple, is pushing into its swing point with volume. What that tells us right now, if you're trying to short the NQ, we're really not getting that message here when we take a look under the covers. Because what Apple is telling us is it's going to go at least tag the top of that TD9 count. And again, that's up at the... Um, it's up at the 182.34 level. It's pushing into there with volume. Wouldn't be surprised to see that get taken out. And if that gets taken out, the next level that Apple would go target is up at the 195.18 area. So time to be careful and time for us to watch our P's and Q's. But in this case, really important for us to watch our A's and M's. That's Apple and Microsoft because between the two of them, we're at about 22% or so. When we take a look at Microsoft, this thing has no top in sight either. In fact, let me just expand out the chart. Clearly, there's an A to B equals CD to the upside. Its next price target is a swing point from back here on July 18th. The high of that swing point is 366.78. Volume there was 64 million shares. So far today, what Microsoft has done is about 7 million shares. So not as strong from a volume standpoint as Apple is, but nonetheless, there's no reason for Microsoft to not go tag that high, 368.78. If Microsoft and Apple are going to go after those highs, which everything that you and I are looking at right now is saying so, the NQ is not going to top. Not a chance. We haven't even taken a look at Amazon. Now, Amazon is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. It's gunning for the 153.57 level. But that top could form between today and Thursday. I'd be waiting more towards Thursday than I would be today. NVIDIA is strong. That's the fourth waiting. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. We'll finish taking a look at the top eight out here. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. What we're doing right now is we're taking a look at the uh, details. We're taking a look at the weighted uh, stocks with inside the NDX 100. We've got the top eight weighted stocks on your screen out here. We've already covered Apple, Microsoft. We were taking a look at Amazon. G-Man inside the Tiger's Den has some calls. Good uh, going there. Now, G-Man, you know, you've got a, a little bit of a dilemma, so to speak. And that dilemma is price is about to tag its uh, breakdown level at 143.57 with bar number eight of a TD9 count. Let's take a look at the swing point. If this can close today, it's traded into it. That's a swing point from September 14th. So we're going to use that as kind of a guide out here. And that swing point has 64 million shares. So far today, you've done 17 million shares. So let's say by 1130, you're going to be up about 20 million. 20 million is going to give us about 60 or so million shares. So we got close to or similar type volume. And the price is able to close the day above 142.95. You're inside that swing point, especially if we're with volume. To me, that would suggest taking a run for the top of that swing point out there. But you are faced with that predicament that you've got a topping signal. Now, the last time we saw a TD9 count bottom out here that formed on the bar following bar number nine. Can't say that that's what's going to happen this time around for the top out there. But you've got that information. You've got that call position. You must be a, a, a happy camper right now. Just know that you've got a likely top that forms between today and Thursday of this week out here. I'd watch the volume today, and I'd watch that swing point maybe to assist you with your decision. But what I'm doing here, folks, we're taking a look at this. And, and when we take a look at this, um, these top eight stocks out here, take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA's got no top signal at all. NVIDIA wants to continue to move higher. Now, it's also getting for its swing point. That's a swing point from October 12th. That swing has 48 million shares. So far today, this has done 13 million shares. So you're going to do 15. That's about 45 million or 48 million shares. So it's moving into that swing point, not with light volume, or at least not with light volume as of 1120 in the morning on uh, the November the 7th. So odds favor that that's where NVIDIA is headed to, higher ground. We're trading above yesterday's high. That's a bullish signal out there. So the top four, 
weighted stocks. That's probably somebody can go figure this out for me, but this is probably 30 percent of the NDX 100. We haven't even gotten to um, Facebook or Meta. Meta's bullish as can be. Meta is going to go target 325.94. We're trading above yesterday's uh, 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 high out there. That's a positive. Broadcom has got some short-term resistance or maybe significant resistance at its TD9 count breakdown level. And that's at 895.63. Now, its swing point takes us back to October 13th. And that swing point's got volume of 2.8 million shares. So far today, this has done... He's only 230,000 shares. So it is moving into that swing point with much lighter volume out there. Watch 895.63 for clues. The price can close above it. Even if it's light volume, boy, you could easily make a run for the 925.91 level. But we're not taking a look at out here with regard to Broadcom. It's anything that's bearish. So that's the top six. There's nothing bearish out there in those. That's why the NQ is moving higher. That's why I throw out a word of caution to try to short the NASDAQ 100 right now. If we take a look at Google, same message out here. That message, it wants to move higher. It's trading into you know, a zone where price had gapped down, but the bottom of the gap, and you're in there, is all the way at the, um, if we really look at it, the bottom of that gap is at 138.75. So in the case of Google, we don't see any kind of a top here. If we look at Tesla, I don't see a top necessarily uh, price is uh, trying to break out above resistance the resistance being the top of its profile but this is the weakest of the uh, uh, eight that we've looked at so far but a close above 219.25 says that tesla wants to move higher look let's not stop there let's try to go and take not try to go we're just gonna we don't try to do anything we either do it or we don't do it right there's no trying so let's go take a look at the next eight instruments inside the ndx 100 costco out here no top in place. This is gunning for its swing point as well, up towards the five, um, well, let's see, I can tell you exactly, at the 577.30 area. Uh, if we take a look at Cisco, nothing bearish about the pattern in Cisco, suggesting to you and I it wants higher price. Uh, a TMUS, uh, this did complete a TD9 count top yesterday. And so what price should do here is pull back to 144.89. But a price closed above yesterday's high, which is 148.66, boy, that tells you about a strong upward momentum move to go there. So we're taking care of what, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11 of the top. And look at Adobe. Adobe is in full breakout mode out here. Not only did it take out a TD9 count resistance level where it formed a TD9 count top, it's above that candle session as well. That candle session, that's from the uh, day of uh, October 12th. Volume there was 4.6 million shares. So far today, 1.1 million shares. This does not have a top in place. Today's bar number six. This wants to move higher. AMD wants to move higher out here. Netflix is going to go target the 449.89 level out there. Kind of getting the feel here that I think that shorting the NQ, in fact, I don't see shorting the markets right now until you get the NQ to top. And when we took a look at what's going on underneath the covers, Wow, we've got a further move higher. Now, the interesting thing about the NQ, so let me close out these charts here because it's taking up a bunch of resources. Let me close these out. And then let me pull open, see if I can, my little day trading uh, piece here. It's where I've got a chart that I want to show to you. Um, sorry that you've got to wait here while I navigate through this. So I think it's right here. Yeah, perfect. So and even we pull up the NQ. So the NQ uh, was Apple. It wasn't the NQ. Um, it was Apple that uh, I was really going to show to you that uh, doesn't. So if we take a look at the NQ out here, my bad. This is going to be day number eight of consecutive moves higher. It's consecutive closes higher is what I should say. But Apple Apple had that pullback. I think it was Friday of last week. Maybe it was Thursday. I think it was Friday of last week. And Apple does not have that same pattern. And Apple can definitely continue to run higher out there. By the way, it's A to B equals CD, which hasn't been confirmed with volume, would take us up to the 185.46 level. Now, as long as we're on this set of charts out here, you can see on the daily time frame here for the NQ, make sure we're on that chart. Yeah, you know, it's taking out resistance, the 15309 level. We've negated a TD9 count top on the five-hour time frame. That is a very strong message as well. 
The four hour time frame chart, uh, no topping signals taken out a wave number seven top. There's no top on the four hour time frame, two hour time frame chart that is. Let's pull back here on the 60 minute chart. No top in sight there. You do have a TD nine count top on the 30 minute that's going to complete here in another four minutes. So that's the top that we see that could take price back to the 15,295 level. But I'd want to understand what's going on with the other 30 minute charts. Well, Steve, -O, if you want to see what's going on with the other 30 minute charts, why don't you just put them up on your screen? Excellent idea. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up that tab, see how these populate, see if we've got any synergy out here from an intraday standpoint of a high. But it, would it be the high? I don't think so. Not after the analysis that you and I did and take a look at the uh, top 11 instruments inside the NASDAQ 100. I take a look at the ES, no TD9 count top. The YM, no TD9 count top. The Russell, the same thing out here. But still, still just the same. Watch this TD9 count top inside the NQ. Right now, it's the high of that last half hour session. We've got about, what, four, a little about three minutes to go. Let's just assume it's the high of that last session and price closed about 15, 395.50. It's telling you about a strong upward momentum move inside the NASDAQ 100. Be careful out there in short. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratios, and the Trend Panic Levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at a little spreadsheet here. The reason we're doing that, Pat S. wrote in and he asked, uh, he asked yesterday about perigee, epigee. We went into that. I won't do a long dialogue there. Uh, but he did ask uh, the question, how do you adjust for time uh, between daylight savings time and eastern daylight time out there? And great question. Yeah, um, look, the data that you've got up on your screen here, this comes from the New American Ephemeris. That is the Bible. I've seen, I've done searches on the internet to look for apogee and perigee, and I don't know where some of those time frames come from. So just be careful out there and use those times. What you do here is you back it off between the, so the, uh, the, the time in the ephemeris is ephemeris time or Greenwich mean time out there. And so you do have to adjust for daylight savings time where you'd back that time off by four hours, or when we get out of daylight savings time, you back it off by five hours. So for example, ephemeris time on uh, yesterday was 21.58. But that doesn't do us any good because my charts are not on ephemeris time out there. So instead, I had to back it off to Eastern Standard Time. That was 1658, two minutes before uh, the actual uh, uh, futures uh, contracts uh, settle out here. And what I've done is this is a chart here. I've got now silver up top, natural gas up top, lights we crude up top at the bottom, the ES, uh, gold, and the NQ. And basically, now this is a short-term type trading vehicle, but it can also give you some long-term information here. And uh, that uh, Apogee pivot point, if you take a look at the ES and the NQ down below, the ES was at 43.8075 and the NQ at 15.224.50. Not unless you see some kind of real significant top up here you know do you want to be short now we took a look at 30 minute time frame we looked at the nq which uh just formed a td9 count uh, top out there again we're watching the high because the price closes above the high of that pattern 15 395 50 that tells about a strong upward momentum move to the upside so what you do pat is you, you def definitely just by four and five hours depending on whether we are in daylight savings time or not hopefully at some point in time we just remain in daylight savings time but I don't have any control over that. So I hope that answered your question. Let's go to the next question. This is coming in from Dan inside the Tigers. Danny wants to take a look at two instruments out there. Let's do it one at a time. The first one is going to be AQST. So we're going to change screens here. We get over to that instrument. If you give me just a moment, and then we'll do our our thing out here. So AQST. Uh, let me just make sure I want to get my other system going to AQST. Is trading at about? Let me make sure. Buck sixty nine. Buck 69 to buck 68 out here. Now, actually, what I want to do here, Dan, is I'm going to go ahead and uh, first move over to my other chart, and then we'll come back to this one. So we take a look at eight, and the reason is because I've got my trend tool on the black background chart. So just simply expand it out from a daily standpoint. And what we can see here right now is prices trading into a fairly significant descending trend line. So you'd love to see price close above this trend line. Where is it close above this trend line? Now, that's a great question. I would have to go with, let's say, a buck seventy-one is going to clear it, and so if this can close at a buck seventy-one today, odds favor move up to one eighty-two. But this is at a level of resistance that's not going to show up when we take a look at my white background chart. So that's the first piece of information. Now let's go back to the white background chart, see what else we can gleam out of here. Well, it turns out that today is going to become bar number eight of a TD nine count top out here. That says that AQST is likely to form a top between today and Thursday. Now, in order for this top to form, tomorrow, price needs to close above, and it seems like a logical and easy thing for it to do, a buck 44. So with that being said out here, knowing that you're up at resistance here, I think AQST on a daily basis is telling us that it wants to pull back to support. And support would be at about a buck 53 out there. And that's, that's on the daily time frame. Um, I don't have anything on a 30-minute time frame yet to suggest that that has started. So on a 30-minute basis, what do we have? Not much. And I mean, really, we don't have much out here. We just have a consolidation with inside the 30-minute profile, 165 to 171. So I would say with regard to AQST, the weekly looks pretty good. Well, no, the weekly looks the weekly still trading below profile support out there. So that doesn't look great. The monthly looks pretty decent uh, because price there is above profile. But I think the daily is signaling to you, Dan, to be prepared for a retracement to begin. And that likely will occur between today and Thursday out there. I hope that helps you out with regard to AQST. Your second request was a take a look at SVRA. So let's get uh, that up on our screens out here. And that is Savara Inc., we take a look at Savara Inc. out here. It's trading at about $3.75 right now. 
And that is trading with inside its profile. And with inside its profile, what I mean is the bottom where buyers are at are 346. The sellers are located at 375, right where we're trading right now. Now, I don't see any kind of a topping signal. If anything, we might have an A to B or confirm one to the upside. The B point would be the November 1st high. Volume of 1.2 million shares. When it was passed a few days ago, oh, only 409,000 shares. Not that it doesn't have an A, B, equal CD to the upside, but um, it does not being confirmed by volume out there. So what I see here in SVRA, Savara Inc., is... Um, it's really a consolidation with inside its profile. It's pulled back in the consolidation. Closed up for one day. It looked like a breakout. This is telling us that yesterday's action, that was a false move. Today's action is kind of con con signaling the same. So perhaps what price is going to do here, I say perhaps because I don't have a signal on a 30-minute time frame, is pull back to test the support area at about 358. On a 30-minute time frame out here, when we take a look at Zavara, what do we see? Just a sideways consolidation. Uh, over the past, uh, you know, 15, 20 hours, something like that out there, trading hours, that is. Uh, maybe it's more than that. So that's what I see when I take look at SVRA. Dan, I hope that helps you out with both of those instruments. And thank you so much for kicking things off and getting this started. Um, SS wrote in and he wanted to take a look at MGNX. And the question is, where is resistance? Well, first, this is one heck of a move that it's having as we take a look at the daily time frame. Resistance is at $7.36. And 736 is a TD nine count breakdown level. That's your resistance level. What this has gotten to today is a high of $7.34. So you want to watch 736. Now, as price got up to that TD nine count breakdown level out here, what it's also doing is today is going to be the bar following bar number nine. In other words, MGNX is confirming a short-term top today, even with that wide-ranging bar. Now, here's the cool thing. I'm not saying you're not going to go short a $6 stock out here. Please, don't, don't tell me you would do that. That's microgenics. What you want to watch as well is the high of the day. If price is able to close above 734 tomorrow or the next day, tells you about a strong upward momentum move and it would bring in the next level of resistance, which is what you were looking for. That's a swing point high from April or May the 10th. That swing point high would be at $7.90. So you've had a nice move. You're completing that TD9 count top. It's probably pretty tired. In order to do that, that's like running a marathon. But when we take a look at what this is doing, it was running the sprint during that marathon out there. Weekly chart looks good. Monthly chart looks good. Um, I don't have a 30-minute chart out here right now, but we can put one on. Let's put the, that was a 65-minute, but let's see what the 30-minute chart here is signaling for us. See if there's any kind of a topping signal. And the answer there is no, there is not. Um, so watch today's high, whatever that is. If price trades above it, just simply tells you a failed TD9 count pattern and a strong upward momentum move for macro genics. Let's see, what do we want to take a look at next? We're going to take a look at FXI, IWM, and the gold contract. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's continue uh, with our requests that have come in. The next one is for FXI. That is a uh, iTrust or iShares uh, China large cap ETF. Always hard to uh, do an analysis on this, much like you and I did on the NDX 100 charts. That's really the way to do it out there. So I'd say if you're trading this instrument, go back and take a look at at least the you know, the top 10 charts out there, top eight charts to get a feel for what this instrument is doing. What I can share with you is the following. It is consolidating with inside its bearish structured profile. It's within inside the sell zone right now. The sell zone is between 2618 and 2675. Support is at 2575 or 2504. That's from the daily time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows a consolidation between 2536 at support and 2715 as resistance. And on a monthly basis, FXI is consolidating between 2506 at support and 3343 at resistance out there. I wish I could provide you more uh, with this uh, instrument, but really I can't. But I believe what you were looking for anyways was support and resistance. So there you go. You basically got a consolidation, a three-way consolidation, daily, weekly, and a monthly out there. Hector and Patty want to take a look at the... Uh, I want to take a look at the IWM, but their specific question, I'm going to go ahead and change screens here. Their specific question was, and so we want to go take a look at the hypothesis here, and that is that once the dollar continues south, will the IWM run higher? Once the dollar continues south. Now, I sort of have a problem with that because I don't think the dollar is going to really run south maybe for a short period of time, but instead we'll take a look at the U.S. dollar index. It's likely to get higher. But well, I think what, what Hector and Patty would like me to do is do that correlation analysis. So I was setting up that chart during the breakout there, and so let's go take a look at that correlation. So here at the top is the U.S. dollar index. In the center is the IWM, and below that is the directional correlation over a three-day average between the two. Bars below zero tell us about an inverse relationship. In other words, if the dollar's moving higher, the IWM would be moving lower, and then vice versa. If bars are above zero, that tells you about a directional correlation. When I take a look at this chart, if we just simply go back, I would say since February of this year out here, I haven't counted them exactly, but Hector and Patty, I think that hypothesis to me looks more like a coin toss a 50-50 than an absolute out there. So I wouldn't be focusing on whether, I, when I, so right now when I take a look at this correlation, 
I wouldn't be using the direction of the dollar to make a determination on what the uh, Russell 2000 is going to do, the IWM. I, it makes sense. I, I get what your, your, the thought process, or I believe I, I get what the thought process is. But when we actually put the thought process to a piece of paper, you know, if you ever want to solve a problem, solving it in your head is probably about the worst way if you haven't solved it already. If you would have, if you had solved it, or if you already solved the problem, you, you wouldn't be in your head anymore. Put on a piece of paper. That, in essence, is what we've done here. And so I think we're going to say, you know, nah, that we're not going to use the direction of the dollar to make our decisions about the Russell 2000 or the IWM. But I think I still have the U.S. dollar index charts out here. And so we take a look at the U.S. dollar index charts. If anything, if price pulls back, where price would be pulling back to would be the 103.96 level. And how do you come up with that, Steve-O? Well, that's pretty simple. We're looking at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart, much like we took a look at AQST, we saw that descending trend line out there. You know, it just says respect it because you've got both rising and falling trend lines, or at least I do on my charting application out here. And so we can see that that's held as resistance, let alone there's a TD9 count top on the uh, U.S. dollar index. So you've got to consolidate with inside of the profile. Can't imagine that we're going to see a move down below 103.96. But we can. But instead, I think what we're looking here, looking at here is U.S. dollar index is still going to be the safe haven, the U.S. dollar, the safe haven out there. So but let's go take a look at the IWM now. So let's go ahead and switch panels. We don't really need to worry about whether it is or it isn't the safe haven. We've really solved today's problem or question, which is uh, what's the correlation between the IWM and the U.S. dollar index. And I think when we took a look at that, or at least my conclusion was, let's not make our trading decisions based upon that. We look at the IWM, though, Hector and Patty. We've got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its daily profile. It's a bullish structured profile, and prices pulled back to the buy zone. And the buy zone on the IWM chart would be between 170.10 and 171.10. Resistance is a profile resist at 175.13 and then where it broke down. And the breakdown level is at 176.42. On a weekly time frame, we've got a nice buy the D point pattern that formed with last week's bull sash candle. However, and this is the real however. Price ran right into that red oscillator and change line. On a weekly basis, there's still a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bullet bearish conditions until price closes above that level. That level would be 174.62. Now, you might think if price closes above 174.62, we could have a party. The problem is it might be a pity party. Why is that? Because this is a bearish structured weekly profile. And the sell zone where the sharks are sitting, they're sitting between 176.31 and 178.75 out there. So that's the analysis of the IWM. It does have a, uh, no, I don't have any bottom real, uh, take that back. No, let me see. No, I take that back. It does have a bottom signal, Hector and Patty, on a 30-minute time frame. It was a TD9 count pattern. The TD9 count pattern completed at 1,400, 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. The low of that pattern is uh, 171.39. We've not had a close below that. So there's TD9 count pattern on a 30-minute basis, price consolidating sideways. The resistance is at 172.57. Above that, 173.03. If price rose above that, closed above that, 175.02 would be in the cards out there. So with regard to the IWM, price, what we can say here is price is pulled back to a support level, uh, likely to bounce further from here uh, based upon that 30 minute time frame chart, but it's got some resistance. So it's not the place where I would be um, day trading, if you will. I think the NASDAQ, the NQ is the better spot. And in the NQ, you're looking to buy pullbacks out there, intraday pullbacks. Let's go to our next request. So Hector and Patty, I hope that answered your question. GPH wanted to take a look at the intraday charts here for Goldilocks. So let's pull those up on our screen out there. From a daily time frame, we can see that price is trading below profile support. That's a bullish structured profile. That's at 1975.60. But maybe the TD9 count that has formed or is forming, I should say, on the 35-hour time frame chart is a signal that gold's getting ready to rally. Well, turns out on the four-hour time frame chart, you've got a completed TD9 count bottom. Now, that's a beautiful thing, GPH. Why is that, Steve-O? Well, because if price closes below that low, and that low on a four-hour time frame chart is 1962.80, that would be our signal that we're going to see lower price inside the gold contract. Otherwise, what should unfold is price should bounce up to 1981. Price bounced up to 1981, that would take us back above our 1975 bottom of its profile level, and just that would continue its consolidation. 
Now, on a two-hour time frame chart, it negated a TD nine count bottom. So that's saying, yeah, I see what you've done on the four-hour time frame chart, but I'm not ready to join your party out there. Uh, do I see any other signals? Not really, not much. So I'd watch the I'd watch the 240 minute time frame chart, or I'd really watch the low of the day because if that low gets taken out, then that low is at 1962.80. Uh, then what we'd be looking at is a further move lower. Let's go out to uh, Michael in Niagara Falls. Uh, Michael, hold on a minute. We're going to go to a break. We come back from this break. We'll go out to Michael, Niagara Falls. I have your question formulated pretty quick because we're going into the end of the show. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Great. Right. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Ord joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating Investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to uh, Niagara Falls. Michael, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Could you Absolutely. chart uh, the BXX? Oh. Yeah, I'm, go, go, go right ahead. Yeah, could you chart the VIX on the daily versus the weekly? So the VIX, not VXX, right? VIX. Got it. Okay. Volatility index. Yeah, 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 yep, 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 yep. I'll put that in there. What? Um, uh, so I'm pulling those charts up. What are you looking at? Tell me what you're looking I'm at. I'm looking to go long gamma. It's okay. Just too too low. So you know the the, the difficulty. Not so that, here's that, no, no, here's, no. That's that that VXX is a 
uh, a Widowmaker. Uh, it's V I X. Yeah, I've got that. I've got the VIX up. Uh, you should see that right now. And uh, what this looks like to me, this wants to do, is the VIX is, wants to go target. I'll give you two levels out here that the VIX itself wants to go target. The first level is its lower Bollinger Band. That's using a 50 to 1 time period or setting. And that level is at the uh, 1429 area. At 1357 is a TD 9 count breakout area. And so that, I think that the range of where the spot volatilics is headed to is between 1357 and uh, 1429 out there. That's a daily time frame. On a weekly, boy, Michael, I, I you know, I just, I just have to say you need to close below last week's low to suggest that we're headed lower. Uh, and last week's uh, low out there was um, $14.91 and or 1495 yeah. as we speak right now. Does that provide well, you with the that information? The weekly chart on the VIX that you're posting right now, doesn't it look like a slingshot? I mean, you're pulling back on that rubber band, okay, and you just let it loose. So here's how I would answer that question. If you take a look at the weekly chart, you'll also see that prices below that red line out there. That's a bearish signal out there. So, no, I'm not seeing a slingshot up to the north. Maybe that happens when price gets back and tests that breakout level of 1357. Uh, Michael, I'd love to spend more time with you, but uh, we're being uh, pulled off the air just simply because the show is over. But thanks so much for calling. We we'll look forward to speaking with you again soon. And, folks, thanks for all the requests today. Sorry that we didn't get to a few of them like Nugget and uh, DraftKings, but we'll certainly do that tomorrow. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks. Take care. Be safe out there.